entered the seminary of the Congregation of the Missions. His college years were spent at Adamson University, where he graduated with a bachelor's degree in philosophy. He continued his studies in theology at the University of Santo Tomas, finishing in 1979. In March of that year, he was ordained a priest. During the early years of his priesthood, he gave popular missions to different parts of the country and later became a pastor of St. Vincent de Paul Parish in Manila. After eight years, he was assigned to the seminary to teach and train the future priest. He continued his studies at the United States, earning a doctorate in organizational behavior in 1999 from Kase Western Reserve University. In 2003, he became the president of Adamson University. He also served as president of the Catholic Education Association of the Philippines from 2011 to 2013. That's the time where I first met our speaker. He was awarded as a doctoral degree in Human Letters Honoris Causa in June 2016. In June 2017, he was elected as the Provincial Superior of the Philippine Province of the Vincentians. I appreciate this holy priest, his humility, so let us all welcome Father Gregorio Banyaga Jr. C. Privilege, although I was surprised why uh, I was uh, invited by Lysander to come, you know. Uh, one day he just uh, wrote me an email and uh, he said he was inviting me to talk about appreciative inquiry. To tell you honestly, uh, I have not been talking about this for some time now, uh, not because I have abandoned the methodology, but uh, it has been a while since uh, I was invited, actually. I know the, the sisters, I gave it to you, you know, to the uh, missionary Catholics of St. Therese uh, in uh, your mother house in Tayabas. I conducted some uh, sessions, the RBMs, you know, during their uh, chapter many years ago, perhaps 12 years ago. I was the facilitator of the chapter, and I used this with some OP sisters as well. With some of the OP sisters, they have different branches. And uh, because I gave this to the uh, major religious superiors, uh, of the uh, different congregations here in the country. And that's the reason why I got uh, to be actually uh, invited. Uh, they are printing the, these slides. Uh, unfortunately, there was a, a virus. Oh, there, there they are. These are the other, uh, the other uh, handouts, but we will give them later on. Because I wanted that as I talk, you know, you are able to write notes on these slides. Because this is a little different. And uh, in my experience, a lot of people had some questions later on because it comes from another paradigm. Okay? So, uh, let's start. 
Uh, remember, this is appreciative inquiry of constructionist approach to organizational change or organizational development. And I would like to underline the word constructionist because later on I will be explaining to you the some some part of the philosophy why this is called a constructionist approach to organizational development or change. Okay, so uh, before we go there, let me just uh, take you to. Uh, okay. To us. Puzzle. Okay. Now, try to solve this puzzle. Okay. Divide the white area in square A into two equal pieces. Can you do that? Very easy. Diva. Okay. Now let's go to quadrant two or quadrant B. Divide the white area in square B into three equal pieces. Can you do it? Very simple. Okay. Question three. Divide square C into four equal pieces. Medyo mahirap yan. It's a little bit... Uh, uh, difficult. Anyway, you can do it. Sirit na. Hindi pa, hindi pa nga kayo nag-iisip eh. <laughs> okay, anyway. If you want to see the solution, it's here. So, correct? That's four equal pieces. Okay, the last one. Divide area D into seven equal pieces. World record is seven seconds. Napakadali. Huh? Ano? Okay. <laughs> oh, very easy. You know, children can do it. Seven seconds. Okay na? Sirita. I think some of you know the answer. Okay, that is the answer. So, the problem is, why did you not get the answer? Diva? Your minds have been conditioned. Correct? Your minds have been conditioned that you have to do it in a certain particular way. And because you did not think outside of that box, you know, you could not get the answer. But children who very often don't think the way we think, we think we are very logical, they get the answer very quickly. Because they think in another way. We think in a particular way. Now, the way we think, actually, is what we call a paradigm. Okay? The word paradigm, wala tayong blackboard dito. It's, it's spelled P-A-R-A-D-I-G-M. Okay, so what is a paradigm? What is a paradigm? A paradigm, actually, you can also call it a worldview, a mindset, Assumption, a pattern, a model, a set of practices, or a model of doing things, or a model of how things work. A model of how things work. Even if this uh, particular example that I will give you, you know, may not be a paradigm, but be before that, just think of some paradigms that we have that have been changed. There was a time when people thought the earth was flat, correct? And then they changed their paradigm and said, the earth is not flat, it is spherical, it's round. Okay, that made navigation possible. Before, navigation was not 
uh, possible because people thought that if you go to the edge of the horizon, you might fall. Hanggang doon na lang. But, you know, when the navigators came back, then people said, perhaps the earth is not flat. It is round because how come they did not fall into the abyss? Correct? Another, another paradigm. And uh, an example of paradigm shift. There was also a time when people thought the center of the universe was the earth. And then Copernicus and Galileo said, it's the sun. You know, the earth and the other planets are moving around the sun. We are not the center. It is the sun. And because of that, if you remember, Galileo was even condemned and excommunicated by the church. It was only John Paul II, if I'm not mistaken, who removed that excommunication. And how many hundreds of years after he was excommunicated? Most probably at least 300 to 400 years. Okay? Today, nobody believes anymore that the center of the universe is the earth. We all believe it's the sun. Diva? What we take for granted today was not taken for granted in the past. It was not known. So this is what we mean by a paradigm. Now I'll give you another case, although they, this may not really be a paradigm, but this is the way things are, the way we look at things. How many of you have gone to the United States? How many? How many? Quite a number of you have gone to the United States. Now, here is the question. If you are driving or you are with somebody in the United States and you are driving and you get lost, where do you ask or what do you do to get directions? You use the map. Correct. You use the map. Now, if still you cannot find the direction in the map or you don't know how to read the map, you know, because it's north, east, south, west, etc. What do you do? Sister. You ask the? The officer. What if you are in a highway, you know, and there are no officers? You cannot even see a thing except, you know, a grass. What do you do? Use the Google. Uh, you, you are very techy, sister. But most people will perhaps use the Google. Where do you ask for directions? Huh? You go to a gasoline station. In a gasoline station, you ask for directions. You don't just stop people anywhere and then ask them, how do you go to this place? You know, that is very rude. You are intruding into their privacy. They will not appreciate that. Even if they answer you, they will not appreciate that. Because their culture is different. Now, if you are here in the Philippines, what do you do if you get lost? Correct. Right? You just ask. First thing, we don't have maps. Very expensive to have maps. And the maps here are not accurate. In fact, in the streets, you cannot even uh, see the name of the street because they vandalized them, they got it already. Tansuyo, they sell it. Okay? So, you, you don't use the map. Second, you know, you don't ask the police because they also do not know where it is. So, what do you ask? Where do you ask? Ordinary people, you know? Ordinary people, and they tell you, don't do that. You don't do that in the United States. They will not understand you. Don't, 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 don't. And then, hindi ganun yung kultura nila. Not only that, in many cases, here in the Philippines, they will even tell you, sasabahan po kita. You know, and they will even go with you. In the U.S., they will not do that. 
Uh, they don't even want to talk to strangers, much less, you know, be with strangers. Otherwise, they are always, uh, they always think of the danger that is present in being with a stranger. Now, these two examples show two different cultures, two different ways of looking at things. In the United States, people are asked to be independent. So at an early age, they already tell them where is north, east, south, west. They teach them how to read maps. They teach them geography. Here in the Philippines, our culture is interdependence. We depend on one another, you know? And people, you know, they don't feel, they don't feel like uh, you are rude if you ask them for directions. In fact, you know, if they follow you or they come with you, then it means, you know, they feel comfortable. Our culture is more interdependent rather than independent. So these are two different cultures, two different ways of looking at things. It may not be a paradigm shift, but it is definitely two different mindsets, two different ways, two different patterns. I'm giving this background because when we go into appreciative inquiry, you will discover that it is a different mindset from the way we look at things, from the way we have been doing things in the past. And my challenge here for you is really to adapt it, you know, or at least to experiment on it. Because even I, in the beginning, I did not believe in it, you know. My, when I was listening to it, and by the way, I went to the school where this was developed, at Case Western Reserve University. Uh, there is one professor there who developed it, uh, Dr. David Cooperrider, who is the son of a Lutheran minister. So during the, my doctoral degree, you know, they, uh, the uh, dean of the school told me, your advisor is Dr. Cooper Ryder. So, you know, in obedience, I had to go to Dr. Cooper Ryder and he said, you know, I chose you because we have something in common. He said, I'm the son of a Lutheran minister and I understand you are a Catholic priest. He said, I said, yes, sir. <laughs> but that became a very good uh, working relationship. And in at least two times, I was with Dr. Cooper Ryder in giving appreciative inquiry. Once to the Diocese of Cleveland, where I got to interview the Bishop of Cleveland at that time, and in another setting, I think in a parish. And he was the one, actually, who developed this method with another professor of Case Western Reserve University. So in the beginning, I was also resisting until, of course, you know, being in that situation, because in that school, they were also developing appreciative inquiry and other methodologies. You know, you get to know some of these methodologies in your studies. Okay, so, I was telling you that uh, 